So here we have a Philips 2205 cassette recording uh, unit. It's a uh, good shape. This is made out of stainless steel. So as the top part, this is a uh, built-in speaker still working. It has a uh, record um, backwards, forward, play, stop functions. The light works. Um, this is the tone. It's a manually controlled tone for recording as well as the volume. Uh, this is the on off button. So if you have it on this position, it will use batteries only. Whereas if you have it on the on position, <clears throat> it, you will be able to see the light and to operate with the electric power. So this was to um, turn on and off the light. Unfortunately, this does not seem to be working. Uh, another feature, this, um, this is for like carrying the unit around. So you can just tuck it in here. Nice, like this. There we go. Um, this is for ejecting the unit. Right now it has a cassette on it. It has this little wheel here that if you look closely, it tells you like, so you're able to see the position of the tape. Like if you only want it to um, be under maybe 30 and then stop, you can just, when the tape reaches this measure here, you can say, oh, I reached my measure and stop recording. This is the brand Philips and instruction manual as well. This is in really good shape. It's in uh, German, uh, Italian, French, English, of course. And um, it tells you like how to record, the maintenance buttons, how to operate the unit. And it's pretty complete. It's simple, but complete. So apparently this unit is uh, from the 1970s. And one neat feature here, since it is made in Holland, you can just manually select with a screwdriver, the type of voltage that you need, in this case is for American voltage. So this is 110. So this is the AC cable, nothing special. Whereas if you were in Europe, you will have 220 or depending your electrical connection. So this port here, it's for a um, speaker. So if you plug a speaker there, this one will stop working and you will be able to hear your unit through the connected speaker. On this side here, we have two connectors. Um, one is a five pin and the other one, it's a, uh, it's a little tight. It's a five pin and the other one is a four pin, I'm not sure, three pin. And it goes for the microphone, so I'm just gonna try to plug it in here one sec. There we go. So I'm just gonna use the unit right now so I can test the speaker. This is the microphone. It's in good shape. Like looks like aluminium finish. It's on the, this is the on, like, so you can stop recording. This is the off, so you can stop recording. And right now it's a, a homemade tape that I found in a garage sale. So if I press play, you can see the unit spinning. And this is the, the volume.
like the quality it's all right nothing too too fancy this is mostly for recording the tone of course but it spins so if i stop it and press record i need to have it first on the record function like this so if i press play here this is not going to spin because it's being utilized by the microphone so the unit knows so i need to like press this and the, the volume i'm sorry the volume is for controlling the volume press this and the record button and it will probably be able to like so if i click it here starts and stop so it's a really good unit like um it does have some uh hello hello test i don't see the, the recording spinning but um yep there we go there we go test test unit testing the unit and of course i can increment or decrement the volume of it now it's in the loud position even though i'm not 100% grabbing the microphone it's picking my voice pretty good whereas if I just put one I'm speaking from the same distance and it barely picks it up hello test so yeah um, stop. I'm stopping and um, one thing that I noticed is like when it reaches the end of the Oh, when it reaches the end of the of the tape, it will let you know with an audible uh, warning per se. So in this case, I stop it, and for some reason the fast and um, rewind buttons are not working. You see. It thinks that it reached the end of the tape. So that is a feature that allows you to know it reached the end of the tape. So you don't keep recording or like keep playing. It's a pretty neat uh, piece of uh, tech of the 1970s. So that's a little bit of an impressive feature to have. What else? So uh, if I do the same with the fast forward, it does not like it. So um, yeah. And that's uh, the unit in nutshell. Uh, it's mostly a player, I would say, and uh, it's it's good quality. It looks pretty decent. Um, and the batteries here in the bottom are not like leaky or anything. Like, <laughs> It's not like it had some leaky batteries in here or anything. Uh, it uses a 15, oh sorry, 1.5 volts battery, I think. I haven't seen one of these batteries for a while, but uh, there's the option, I guess. So, yep, yep, yep. This is the bottom, it's not scratched. So, yeah, so I'll try to put this back with one hand, there we go, like that. There we go. So it, it looks uh, pretty decent. It's a pretty attractive piece. Philip is a good brand. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions or um, if you wanna check out other kind of electronics like cassette players, I have more, or vinyl players and amplifiers, receivers, etc. So thank you.